This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome to the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Today we're headed back to May 17, 2011. Mr. Fred Gross stopped by. Fred is the owner creator of Mojo Bricks. Pretty interesting product. I learned a lot about that product from this conversation. We're going to hear from Fred in just a minute. But first, here's Greg's conversation with Chris Lilly of Big Bob Gibson fame talking a little bit about Memphis and May shoulder and the judging process. Chris Lilly joining us from Big Bob Gibson's. They just won the world championship of barbecue for Memphis and May for 2011. Chris, for the people that don't know, uh, the Memphis and May, they obviously have that blind judging area like you would be used to in any type of KCBS arena, but then they also have the on-site judging. And I wonder, you know, you've spent a decent amount of uh, time on television here over the last uh, handful of years in certain different aspects. When it's time for the judges to come on site to you, does the TV experience and having kind of that pressure uh, sense being put on you with cameras and, you know, hitting your marks and doing all this other stuff that you've garnered with television, has that helped you hone and craft the presentation for the judges or is it a completely different atmosphere regardless? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I imagine some of that has helped, uh, you know, it, you know, even if it's subconsciously, um, just being in front of people and, you know, having so many people right outside our fence watching the presentation. Um, there are a lot of people there and a lot of cameras. Um, but the main thing I'm thinking about when a judge comes in is I'm, I want to be totally open and honest with them. I tell the judge exactly what we do uh, from start to finish. Um, it's a subject that I'm very comfortable with, and I think that's the main thing when you're doing the presentation uh, for Memphis in May. Uh, if you know barbecue, if you know your barbecue and your style and you're completely confident in that, um, then it's it's easy. It's really easy presentation. Um, um, and I'll tell the judges straight up that uh, this is my style, this is the way I do things. You know, uh, you know, it may differ for somebody else, but it's the best way to go for me. This is what I do. And I start from the, very, uh, from the raw product, tell them uh, how I choose my pork, uh, go from injections to dry rubs to times to temperatures to fuel to everything that takes me start to finish wood selection. I go through the whole process. Uh, I basically try to answer the judges' questions before before they ask them. Uh, I tell them everything, and and you know it's something I know. I know barbecue, and anybody that that uh, cooks at a high level at Memphis and May in those those contests should be the same way. If you know your style and how you do it, and if you know barbecue, just tell the judge. That's all you have to do. So, having made it back to the finals now, as you said, you were out of it for a number of years. Uh, was there any kind of that, that new nerves of anxiousness and stuff as the on-site judging was about to happen, or you just fall right back into the old, you know, it's game time and we're here to win this thing? You know, I guess it, I guess game time. Yeah, just game time. Let's just, you know, let's just go, go with it. I was definitely confident in the shoulder. And you really, you really know what you've got as soon as you start breaking into the shoulder and, and, and feeling it. If you've broke down enough shoulders in your life, once you start breaking it down, you know how good it is. Um, so yeah, I think it's just game time. Just, uh, just, just go with the flow. It's nice to see you guys on television, uh, you know, at least the people that I have talked to in the past, uh, and, and see some new people get some face time on the television. Do you think it's helping grow the word of barbecue in the right way? Uh, you know, that, that's a tough question. And then I think a lot of people that get overlooked are, are the um, people in the mom-and-pop restaurants on the, you know, on the roadside that, 
that are really the true pit masters that uh, that work at it day in and day out. Uh, you know, burning down wood and shoveling coal and 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 really putting out a fantastic product. So it's you know you know I think a lot of barbecue nowadays you know the people look at television or look at the people cooking the contests and say, hey that's barbecue when when they really should appreciate more of their you know their hometown cook um, a little bit more. Um, but with that said, I think uh, any kind of attention to barbecue uh, gives us a chance to um, to um, you know, you know, put the art out there for everybody, and really get a chance to put it in front of everybody. You know, whether it's somebody come going to a contest and, and and getting enthused about it, or watching television, whether it be Best in Smoke or any of the Pit Masters or any other barbecue shows we've done over the over the years. Um, I think, and this is what I hope. I hope a show will come along that uh, will really get some legs under it, no matter who the cast is. But if it is successful, um, it would give a lot more people within the barbecue world a chance to get on and, and showcase what they do. So, uh, you know, a lot you look at a lot of these shows and, and you see the same people over and over again. And that's got to get a little, you know, old or frustrating, you know, to some of the people that, that want to showcase. But I'm just hoping that, that one day that this will catch, and I think it will. To put in your request for a future show, please contact John Solberg via email at john, J-O-N, at the bbqcentralshow.com. Give us a little background, A, uh, about yourself personally, Fred, kind of you know where you're at business-wise, if you've always been a person that's been into this whole barbecue and grilling thing, and how this whole mojo brick thing, what it is and how it comes about. I can answer your question that you asked before, how I got into barbecue or how I got started in the in the wood business and and uh start there. Yeah. Um back in o back in oh seven uh, I heard about wood pellets for the first time and uh, a lot of listeners will know about pellet grills and that sort of thing. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of a wood pellet and uh, started looking into that side of the business, uh doing some market research and somewhere around February of 2008, I came across a, a, a bigger wood pellet. It's, a, it's basically a, a pellet that's not extruded like uh, wood pellets are for grilling, but rather compressed and molded. Um, and typically these pellets, uh, we call them bricks, and on our side, uh, they're dense. It's dense wood is what it's called. And they're typically six inches long and about three inches thick. And they look just like a brick you put in your sidewalk. So uh, got into uh, buying these things and then reselling them um, and back in, uh, in the spring of 08. And you just kind of fell in love with the whole concept, huh? Yeah. Uh, at the time, I was going through some changes in my life. I was in between jobs. Uh, didn't have, I was staying at a friend's house, kind of sleeping on the couch, didn't have a whole lot of money to my name, and I was looking for a uh, change. And uh, that's how I got to um, uh, to the dense wood and got into the pellet business. And uh, uh, we, the first thing we did was kind of unique. We went and collected raw materials, anything that we could figure out that might make a good barbecue smoking product. We ended up collecting coffee grounds at all the local area coffee uh, restaurants, you know, the Starbucks of the world, uh, I collected about maybe, I don't know, three, four tons of the stuff, uh, placing it in garbage bags and putting it in my car, and then I'd drive it up to a guy who made pellets up in Michigan, and we'd, we'd make these coffee pellets. Uh, and turned out that uh, the best use for them is making... You you smoke corned beef with coffee pellets. That's the best use for them. <laughs> that seems completely outlandish, I suppose. Yeah, and nobody wants to buy coffee pellets. So <laughs> we moved from coffee pellets to uh, to wood uh, pretty quickly. It took us about eight months to figure out there's no market for coffee pellets. So we ended up with the wood brick. And 
uh, started in the home heating market, we improved upon the packaging that was in the marketplace. Uh, started making a four pack and we still have an eight pack and picked up some large accounts, uh, started marketing the, the four pack to the Midwesterners. You have to understand that wood bricks, this, this form of, of, uh, home heating fuel has been around in one shape or another since the late 1800s. It's been wow. here. It's been in use. It just hasn't become popular until a guy by the name of Tom Angle brought the wood, the dense wood brick back from Europe in 2005, and he started manufacturing them in Connecticut, and that's really where America got its start. So it, the, the dense wood brick that I currently sell, which is a barbecue brick, uh, which is a wood smoke grilling brick, uh, that uh, hadn't been around since until 2005 in America. Now, my barbecue wood is a lot different than what you'd buy to, to put in your home to heat with. Yeah, I was just going to say, from what I understand, especially since uh, the wood pellet uh, home uh, stoves to heat your house have been around for quite a while now, uh, that you can use, well, just plain and simple, it's a difference between what you're heating your home with pellet-wise and what you're going to be putting in a cooker to eat with as far as if it's FDA compliant, if it's safe to cook with. Uh, however, you can use what you're going to cook with your uh, food in your in your heating stove if you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the wood pellet On the wood pellet side, I don't recommend you taking home heating wood pellets and running them through your pellet grill. Um, the main difference in the pellet world is you have different sizes of pellets. You have uh, fines in pellets. Um, the quality of pellet, a lot of times if, if stores, uh, some of the big box stores might leave them out in the yard. Uh, they might leave them outside. That's going to affect them in your pellet grill. You know, and, and people that have pellet grills, they understand that, you know, things break down. Um, the main difference between our pellet, the giant pellet, the Mojo brick pellet, and say a, a wood pellet is when you use our our brick, our Mojo brick. Uh, there's no need for electricity. There's no need for any moving parts. You use it like you would firewood or uh, you know wood splits or uh, charcoal. So how big is this wood brick? And if I'm going to, because I'm under the impression that if I got a pallet of uh, the Mojo bricks. I could use it in place of the wood that I'm getting from my local uh, orchard, from the apple orchard or whatever that I'm using in my offset cooker. I could instead substitute mojo bricks for the wood that I would be buying from an orchard or from other some firewood purveyor. Let's say you buy a 4x4x8. Four by four by mm -hmm. So that's a full cord of wood. Yep. A full cord of firewood is equivalent to one pallet of my product. So... That 4x4x8 four by four by pile of wood takes up a lot of space. It takes up a 4x4x8 four by four by space, whereas our wood is going to be 40 inches, 48, 48 inches long, 40 inches wide, and 3 feet tall. So it's literally reducing the space that you store the wood in by more than half. It produces more energy than that firewood, specifically because you have 5% moisture in the Mojo Brick wood versus of uh, 20% in a firewood uh, that's been uh, well seasoned. And then because of its density, it's a very dense wood, there's no wasted energy. It just burns uh, for a very long period of time. So it, the benefit of using my product is a convenience factor. You can dial in the temperature in your smoker with these things because it's symmetrical in size. It's the same thing each time. And when you put it in, you can you can do things systematically with your wood, uh, similar to say charcoal. So would you say? I mean, what's the type of? Uh, and it's probably different depending on how much air you have coming over it. But if I was using a stick burner and I was trying to keep it around, you know, two hundred fifty, two hundred seventy-five degrees, am I getting typically when I'm adding in a stick? Uh, or when I'm using an offset, I'm usually throwing on a log, let's say, every 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, depending on if the sun is hitting it right and depending on what kind of temperature it is outside. What kind of a, a burn time in between would I have to be coming back and adding again every hour just like I would now, or am I going to be able to press out? It, the, it's typically two to one. 
So if you're burning, let's just say you put your split in there every hour, you would put a mojo brick in there every two hours. How do you get it lit? You can add our bricks right to the hot coals and they'll light on fire. Or you can put them uh, in a TP formation and light them with newspaper or use a fire starter. What I do not recommend you do is use a, a petroleum liquid like a briquette fuel. I don't recommend that because the wood will absorb that uh, petroleum uh, fuel and you'll smell it the entire time the wood's burning. Uh, Fred Gross joining us from Mojo Bricks. And the website is Mojo Brick. Is it Mojo Brick or Mojo Bricks.com? Uh, with an S, MojoBricks.com. MojoBricks.com. Mojo Bricks. I got to give those a run. They sound like fun. That is Chris Lilly and Fred Gross from May 11th, 2011. If you'd like to hear this entire episode, head over to the BBQCentralShow.com. There's a link to this show in the show notes to take you right to it. There is an archive tab there. You can search for anything you would like to search out. While you're there, do me a favor, hit the subscribe tab, subscribe to the Barbecue Central Show via podcast. You will never miss an episode of this show or the Barbecue Central Show again. Hey, thanks so much for checking this out. I'm your host, John Solberg. I'll talk to you soon.